In the previous lecture, we discussed the concept known as electromagnetic induction. Now, electromagnetic induction is essentially the process by which a changing or non-uniform magnetic field induces an EMF, an electric potential difference within that conducting wire. Now, there are two scientists who are essentially credited for discovering this concept at the same time independently. So, one scientist was the American by the name of Joseph Henry, and a second scientist was an Englishman by the name of Michael Faraday. Now, Michael Faraday further explored the factors that essentially influence the magnitude of this induced EMF. So he was able to show that there are two factors that influence the magnitude of induced EMF that is produced by non-uniform magnetic field. So he was able to show that the more rapidly the magnetic field changes, the greater the induced EMF. And he was able to show that the magnitude of the induced EMF also depends on the area of the loop of wire through which that changing magnetic field travels, through which the magnetic field lines travel. Now before we state Faraday's law, let's define this concept known as magnetic flux, which is essentially used to define Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So, in the same way that we were able to define electric flux, Magnetic flux also exists and it's given by the Greek symbol phi with the M symbol which stands for magnetic. So the magnetic flux is equal to the dot product of the two vectors, the magnetic field and our area vector which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now by definition of dot product, the dot product of these two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of the these two vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta, which is the angle between these two vectors. Now this equation only works as long as our magnetic field is assumed to be uniform. What about a non-uniform magnetic field or a changing magnetic field? To calculate the magnetic flux when our magnetic field is non-uniform, we essentially have to take the closed integral of the dot product of our changing magnetic field and the infinitely small uh, area given by dA. And this is equal to the closed integral of BDA multiplied by cosine of the angle theta between these two vectors. Now, let's examine the following diagram in which we're going to study this equation further. Let's suppose we have the following magnetic field lines which move in the positive direction along the x-axis. And these magnetic field lines pass through a certain loop of wire as shown by the following diagram. Let's suppose we have a square loop of wire as shown and the side length of the square of loop of wire is given by L. Now the area of this loop of wire is given by taking the product of L and L, so L squared gives us the magnitude of our area vector. Now this symbol is simply our area vector whose direction is always perpendicular to the face of our loop. So the angle between this loop and our area vector is always 90 degrees. And the angle theta that we described in this equation is the angle between our magnetic field vector and our area vector. Now, if the angle is zero, that basically assumes that our magnetic flux is equal to the dot product of these two vectors, which is equal to the magnitude of B multiplied by the magnitude of A, which is simply the area of our loop of wire multiplied by the cosine of the angle. Now, in such a case, as described in this diagram, the angle between our magnetic field lines and our 
our area vector is zero. They point in the same direction. And because cosine of zero is one, that means this is equal to b times a. When the angle is zero degrees, that implies our magnetic flux is at a maximum, and that is equal to b times a. Now, on the other hand, if we take our loop of wire and we orient our area vector so that it points at a 90 degree angle with respect to our magnetic field lines, that will imply that cosine of 90 is zero, so our magnetic flux will be zero. And we see that the minimum quantity of magnetic flux is equal to zero, and that's the case when our magnetic field field lines point at a 90 degree angle with respect to our area vector. So, if we take this loop and we orient it this way so that none of these lines pass through our area of the loop, then in that case, our magnetic flux will be zero. Now, we define what magnetic flux is, so we're now ready to define Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So, from these two results, we see that our induced EMF is equal to the negative of the rate of change of our magnetic flux, which is given by taking our derivative of our magnetic flux with respect to time. So this equation known as Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction gives us the EMF in induced and it is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. Now notice in this case we're dealing with only one loop of wire. Let's suppose we take n number of loop of wires that have the same exact area and we stack them on top of one another. So if we have n loops of wire then in that case Faraday's law becomes as follows. Our induced EMF is equal to negative of the product of n, the number of loops of wire, multiplied by the rate of change of our magnetic flux given by d magnetic flux with respect to dt with respect to time.